Every day, thousands of refugees arrive on this shore. Most are fleeing the Syrian civil war, hoping to resettle in Europe. We see babies which are only a few days old, old people at the age of 90, 95 even. And we get mainly people from Syria, also from Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran. Waiting to help them on the beaches of Greece are the last people the Syrians might expect. Volunteers from Israel. My name is Tali Shaltiel. I'm here with Israel, an Israeli-based NGO. My name is Majida Kardosh. I'm here as a medical team. I work as a nurse. My name is Iris Adler. I live in Tel Aviv. I just finished med school in Tel Aviv University. I came here uh, through Israel to be on the coast as a doctor. My name is Manal Shadi. I'm from Nazareth and I'm the team lead of Israel in Greece. The Israel team is a mix of doctors and nurses, both Arab and Jewish. I am a Palestinian citizen of Israel. Arabic is my mother tongue. I'm also Christian, so I'm a minority inside of a minority inside of Israel. Being aware of my history, my background, where I come from, the history that my people went through, this is something that appeals to me. I mean, I can help refugees, so this is my job and this is what I should be doing. Our job here is to receive the boats of the refugees that are coming from the Turkish side to the Greek side. There are many, many volunteers on the beach, not many medical teams. On the line from the Turkish side, they're going through a lot of problems. There are smugglers there are asking them to pay between a thousand to five thousand dollars per person. A lot of time they're just shoving them into boats that should fit 50 people, but there are 150 people on the boat. They just leave them midway through the sea and they tell them, you find your own way to Greece, we're not responsible on you. Or they put, they put like half a tank of gas and they just leave them in the middle of the sea. What we do is go to Hind Point with binoculars, searching and scanning the water, and you start looking for this black with orange dots in the view. And then it comes nearer and you start seeing the rubber boat and all the people on it. It's like one, two, three, it begins. It's a few minutes of chaos, taking off the babies, people screaming, shouting, helping them, you know, a lot of them don't know how to swim, they're afraid from the water. Here is the point that we start doing a triage, a very fast, you know, by hearing, they're talking, looking at the refugees, so we can see who is in need of medical help, and I start shouting, Min badu doctor, who need a doctor in Arabic? And so this is the time that we start giving treatment. I've treated 14-year-old Afghani guy that was unconscious. He didn't receive aggressive treatment on the shore, on the spot. He might have not made it. After that, we start giving them food and water, warm clothes, something to eat, to drink, because some of them they didn't have any water or food for like one or two days. After that, I take the map. We have a map that we translate on it in Arabic explain to them what is the next step you know they don't know where they are okay i so the first thing that i tell them that they are in lesbos island in greece because some of them they had like no idea where they are most of them they had nothing they just come with their clothes only because they had to throw their bags in the sea or smugglers took their bags and threw in the sea after a couple of days of assessing the field, we understood that the biggest need is a way to communicate with the refugees who come. So we brought a team from Israel, which is Arab speaking, and the effect was amazing. Hearing your language is very important to them, and then getting the instructions where to go, what to do next, what are the next steps, because they have a lot of uncertainty. And although Israel and Syria are technically at war, None of that matters here on the beach. 
usually when they get to the beach, they're just happy to see people waiting for them, giving them help and food and clothes and medical treatment if they need. Sometimes they realize who we are and they, they're just happy to see us and they hug us and kiss us and it's very exciting. We get lovely, warm, like warming reactions of hugs and, you know, men kissing me like I'm their daughter, you know, on the forehead, saying thank you, saying that I would never have thought that I was going to receive treatment or be able to speak to, from an Israeli doctor or share my story with an Israeli who will empathize with what I've been through.